Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. There's also people in the industry that do things subliminally or behind your back, oh, yeah. backstabbing, whatever you want to say to you. Yeah. 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 Right, Walt, you know about some of that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a taste of that that uh taste there, of that knife. There's a lot of that with big companies too, and mm-hmm. I saw that at Remington and at SIG and it makes me sick. I don't like it, I don't appreciate it. If I say something online, I'll say it to your face. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not gonna say it to your face, I don't say it. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, you see a lot of that at big companies. You know, when I was at SIG, there were lots of people you know, that were in their mid fifties, early sixties and big executives at three or four places working their way up. And all they're working on is their, their retirement lake house or mountain house or whatever. And they just want things to be smooth until they're out of there. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm still young enough at 46 and and I guess it's age, but I want to believe it's passion to where I am all in. When I sold my company to Remington, I was a company man. I wanted to make Remington the greatest company in the world. When I went to SIG, I was fully committed. I didn't work for several years and I decided to go back to work and I wanted to make SIG the greatest company. And I recruited friends and I recruited people I knew could make it great. And we went after the military business. So look what SIG's done in the military market. Mm -hmm. I was fully committed, but I don't mesh well with the rest of the corporate world. Because when you get these guys that are on the brink of retirement and they're just trying to make their bonus. I didn't mm-hmm. care about my bonus. The last year I was at SIG, I offered to work for $1 and that I only got my salary and my bonus if we met our goals mm-hmm. that I decided upon. No other executive that ran any other part of the business would commit to that. Wow. Yeah. And that committed I was. Like, I wasn't there for the money and I'm not a key for the money. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like getting a paycheck, but I like being awesome and developing great stuff and having a great team and making an impact. I feel like this is something you can't let go of, and and sorry for me being rude there. It's because I kind of relate to it. Like, I have this conversation with people around me all the time, especially with all the things going on on social media and all that, and and if you're a gun guy. And people are like, "Why, why are you doing the gun thing, man? Why don't you just do some other stuff? Um, You know, that same energy, you'll do a lot better. And I'm like, I can't let go of this. You know, or it won't let go of me. Whatever it is, it's got a hold of me. And I just feel like I get up every day and I think about this and I'm passionate and, and I could push myself in it. And it would be really easy. The day when I wake up and I'm like this, okay, that's it. I don't know. I'll be yeah. out. But I haven't, I haven't met that day yet. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think I was very fortunate in my late teens. You know, I grew up in a city. My parents were liberal. They didn't own firearms. Um I was exposed to them and instantly fell in love. And I don't know why. And, and I've said it in like interviews and podcasts before. When I knew that I liked women, I was six years old. It was not 80. It was a warm summer day. Wonder Woman was on television. Oh, boy. And I didn't know why I loved Linda Carter, but I knew I wanted one of those. You got the you got the fizzy bubbly feeling. Yeah, <laughs> I know and, that. Yeah, I know about that. Yeah. I mean, we all do with yeah. different parts of our lives, but mm-hmm. then the second time that happened in my life was with firearms. Mm-hmm. And you know, like I said, I didn't grow up with it. Like I was exposed to it, and then I was exposed to silencers, and. I've been driven every day ever since, and I'm just as passionate at 46 as I was at 19. And, you know, at 35, I sold my first company. We had zero debt. I had tens of millions of dollars. And I lost my mind because I continued working for a couple of years, and then I was fired from Remington. And I was miserable. It was the first time in my life I was miserable. You know, like I had three young children, but... Like, I didn't want to take them to school every day and be a, you know, stay at home dad. Like, and I didn't understand. It took me a few years to figure out I was a product guy and I loved innovation. Mm -hmm. And now at 46, going through all those things, you know, I know what I love. I love my kids. Mm -hmm. Um, I love who I am. I love my partner. I love hunting. I love firearms. And within firearms, I love my work. I love innovation. That's what I want to do. Mm Mm-hmm. 
And so, you know, that's why it's easy for me to ignore all the other stuff. You know, the ATF, what they're doing is illegal. It's wrong. Everyone should be ashamed. They should be ashamed. Everyone should join this fight. Me personally, whatever. They can do whatever. As long as they don't bomb my house, hurt my kids. I don't care. I go on tomorrow to do something else, but everyone else will lose a lot of rights. This, this is a very important fight, but I'm very happy at my, my position in life, and I know who I am and what drives me, and that's what I want to do. Okay, awesome. Now, I would be remiss here if I did not ask you, um, since you're mentioning uh, you know, Remington, uh, you know, Freedom Group, all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, how do you feel about the, the news lately of it being broken up and sold and What's your feelings on who it got sold to, etc.? If you if you if you can talk about that or you want to. Oh yeah, I'll talk about anything. Um, yeah. You know. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, he took that deep breath. <laughs> I I love all my children. And mm-hmm. advanced was my first child. Mm-hmm. You know, started it when I was a sophomore in college. Okay. Wow. Um. I believe in what we were doing there, and I believed in it when I sold it to Remington, and I thought it needed to be sold to a major gun company for silencers to become legitimate. Mm -hmm. And 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 most of your viewers, and I don't know how old you are, but you're definitely younger than me. Uh, I'm actually I'm actually 48. How old are you? Bryce. How old? (laughs) I'm 48 years old, man. (laughs) 46. I thought you were like 30. No, I'm an old dude, man. And I graduated high school in like 1988, so. 92? Yeah. But I graduated um, early. Yeah. But most people didn't understand that silencers were even legal at the time when I sold the company. I thought we needed to sell to a legitimate big gun company to make them legitimate. Mm -hmm. And I still would do the same thing today. The problem was, you know, Cerberus and Freedom Group had a bunch of coke heads running the firearms portfolio, and they ruined it. Um, okay. The sale, you know, they called me about 18 months ago and offered me, so someone they had hired to sell the company. And you think, when, when I was fired from my position at Advanced Armament under Remington, mm-hmm. um, we I had a 60-month contract to run the company. We made... I made my 60 month numbers in 26 months. Mm. So I'm trying to renegotiate my contract and they fired me rather than pay me $10 million they owed me. Mm. So they ended up sued them in federal court and it's all public record. They had to pay me risk attorney's fees. Mm-hmm. Um, so 18 months ago, they contacted me and offered me the company for $2 million. So I offered them a million dollar cash sale, an asset purchase, and they turned it down. I didn't hear anything else. It went to auction mm. and Palmetto State, um, whatever their parent company's name is, J- JJE. J-J-E. Yeah. So they bought it, I think, with three or four other companies. And um, mm-hmm. I don't even know that they meant to buy it. So I've actually talked to them recently mm-hmm. and I either want to buy the company from them, which my, my kids really want me to do, mm-hmm. or. Um, I want to help them to make that company successful. Okay. I mean, I, I mean, it's a part of my life. Mm-hmm. It's it's what I did the first 17 years of my adult life, and I'd like to see it brought back to somewhere where it was. Um, you know, they obviously just you know ran the horse into the ground and took all the profit. They didn't innovate. They still have the same website mm-hmm. I built 50 years ago. Okay. Uh, so, so I would like. Happen. You'd like to see it happen. I, um, you know, I know some of the guys over at uh, PSA, uh, the owner of, J- of JJE Capital, um, uh, Jamin. I know we're trying to get him actually to come here on the show since this whole thing happened and talk about that. And hopefully we will get him on. But you know what? That's one of the things that I like about you, man, that you're saying you just want to, you know, this is something that you birthed, you know, and you want to make sure that it's successful and and it goes, you know, nowhere except up, you know, that's, that's a good thing. I mean, yeah, I, I want it to be, I want it to work out. I mean, they ran it into the ground and, mm-hmm. you know, you think it was five times the size of Silencer Co. when I sold it. Wow. And now, you know, people half our age, they don't even know what advanced hormone is. Mm-hmm. So 
that's sad to me, but you know, it's life. Like whatever, I let it go and someone else took control and they did what they did. Yeah. And, and, you know, the story is not over though. The story is not over. No. And I, I tell you one thing that's really great about all this and, um, is it makes me look like a genius every time I leave a company and it fails when it was at the top. <laughs> really easy. Like I make yeah. money. Yeah. But yeah. I want. I would love to own it again. Mm -hmm. if, if Jamin's not willing to sell it to me, then I'm going to work with him to try to make it successful in a way that it doesn't harm my current company. Mm -hmm. and line I won't cross because it, this is where I live today. But I will. I will help Advanced Armament all I can. Um, but I'm not going to let it hurt my current company and employees and customers. Understood. Understood. Uh, let me get this in real quick, and then we'll go to some other stuff here. Uh, Military Arms Channel said a little while back, he said, Kevin, your Instagram posts are gold. You love ribbing the competition, which is why I say you're masterful at how you market yourself and your products. It's different, and it gets attention. So that's from, that's from you know, Military Arms Channel. Uh, that Tim's cool. Yeah. I'm, He's all right. Just, He's all right. I'm, I think I'm older than him, too, probably. No, he's 52. Oh, he's 52. Oh, he's an old man. Yeah, yeah, yeah old. He to hang it up. <laughs> I mean, I think for me with the competition, you know, it's one thing when whatever it is about my personal life, mm -hmm. I have led a very imperfect life. But I think with business, I've only been successful. Like, I am, I am in the top. There's probably 75% of my company that are smarter than me. Mm -hmm. Um. I make tons of mistakes every day, and I'm okay with that. And, and that bleeds into my personal life. I've not mm -hmm. been the, the best father in the world, but I try really hard, and I commit a lot, and I spend a lot of time, which I think is important. Um, but with marketing, you, you know, one thing that it, is people within our industry and customers have become consumed with my personal life, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's, you know, whatever it is, whether if I get arrested or whatever's happened in my life. And it's generally all involves my children's mother. And I think most reasonable people, especially if you're older, you've been married, and you're a man that has full custody and all decision-making for your children, that probably speaks to most people. Mm -hmm. But once your whole life becomes public, there's two ways you can take it, in my opinion. Either it's very upsetting and it's depressing and it causes you stress, or it's very freeing and liberating. Mm -hmm. now, I can do anything I want. And it's pretty freeing to me, you know, and to, to me, when it comes to work and the competition, you'll find very few people more honest about their company, their products, their goals, their mistakes than me. And I think that really translates well to a lot of people. And I just think that makes me lucky and fortunate. Um, you know, I'm a consumer. I, I'm, I'm just a person. I am very driven, and I'm fortunate enough to have this company and have great employees and have assembled a good team. And I say whatever the hell I want. And if you lie about your products, I call you out. If they compete with me. Yeah. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.